everybody. Welcome to our Friday night home group Bible study. Glad that you um, tuned in tonight. Um, I'm glad you tuned in tonight. Amen. Um, we ask you if you have any prayer requests um, to send those over uh, right now and then in a few moments when we go before the Lord, uh, we'll, we'll lift those, those things before the Lord. I uh, want to go over some quick announcements here tonight. Uh, of course, we are live every night, every Friday night at uh, 7.50. And the reason for that is um, we actually do start at 7.30, and we hope that you do as well. And so at 7.30 to 7.50, uh, we are worshiping the Lord here in our home. And uh, we're hoping that those of you that are live streaming, um, that you are doing the same thing as well. Uh, you don't just you know, put it on at 7.50 and then just, hey, man. Let's see. Let's hear the word of the Lord. So, um, you know, just take that first um, 20 minutes uh, just to meditate in His presence, even if you know you're not clapping and screaming and having a, a, a joyful time like that. Uh, that you just take that that 20 minutes. That's the reason why um, we do go live at 7:50 because if we play the music, um, then they'll shut us down. They'll, they'll remove us from from Facebook for not having the copyright and for that sort of those infringements and stuff like that. And so um, I hope that you're doing that. So make sure you do that on your on your Friday nights, so you can just get yourself into the mind of God and get your heart prepared for what the Lord has um, for you on, on our Friday night um, home group Bible studies. Uh, tomorrow morning we do have prayer meeting at eight o'clock in the morning, and we will be meeting there at our church in the city of Baldwin Park. And uh, we just ask you to, um, if you're not busy, you don't have anything going on tomorrow. Uh, just come on down to the church and be a part of our prayer meeting as we just get a hold of the Lord uh, from 8 to 9. It's only an hour that we're there. And then we have the rest of the day uh, to just go ahead and enjoy uh, your weekend. Also, ladies, uh, don't forget that tomorrow um, there is a women's discipleship at 10 in the morning. And it is not an in-person discipleship. It is going to be on the Facebook um, Praise Chapel Baldwin Parks Facebook Live and so, ladies, don't forget to tune in. Um, go to prayer meeting, and then you're home at about 9.15, and then uh, you can just uh, get yourself prepared and, and see um, what the word of the Lord will be for you as the Lord speaks to you, ladies, tomorrow. Uh, it's for women only. Uh, so, men, stay off. It's not for you. It's a women's discipleship. Uh, but you're in luck, uh, men, because immediately on Monday night at 7.30, uh, we have our monthly men's discipleship and will be held there in the city of Baldwin Park, our praise chapel right there in Baldwin Park. And so um, uh, men, just remember, uh, be faithful um, to what the Lord is doing. Also, don't forget um, that we do have our Sunday morning services. We do start at 930 and encourage you, um, you know, to just come on down and be a part of what the Lord is doing. Um, we are, um, we are you know, just having a good time in the presence of the Lord. And I'll tell you um, what a what a wonderful service we had on Wednesday, uh, man. It just it, everything just felt normal again um, as there were uh, two two young men that gave their hearts to the Lord. And I'll tell you, man, that's the kind of stuff um, that excites me um, to just see the kingdom of God continuing to advance. Um, to see um, these two two men just uh, hurting and in and in a place of, of just of just man just needing the Lord. And just watching uh, just the ministry and the work of the Lord go forth. And I'm telling you, I was touched. I was, I was really, really touched by what was happening, man. The, just the presence of God was there. And, uh, and I'll tell you, man, we are, we are just uh, getting back um, to normal as far as the kingdom and the way we operate in the kingdom uh, with our goal, our mission, our vision um, to win, build, and send. And so we just want to continue winning people to the Lord. And so um, don't forget if you, um, uh, you have people uh, in your family and they're just kind of freaking out over this pandemic thing still and wondering what's going to happen, what's going to happen with the election, what's going to happen with our country, what's going to happen with all these different things. Man, tell them, man, just come into the house of the Lord, invite them to church. They can wear their masks, their temperatures will be checked, and just let them come in and just let the Lord minister to their hearts, amen, uh, because that is ultimately what it is about. It is about the kingdom of God, and I'll tell you, we're having a good time um, where we're serving there. I want to continue to remind you, if your church has not opened yet, 
um, due to many different reasons. Um, you know, some don't own their buildings, some of their churches are too big, and uh, you know, they couldn't uh, uh, meet the requirements. Uh, they have way too many people. Well, uh, we'll take you. Come on down and, and have a good time with us. Uh, we'll take you even if it's just for the season, uh, just to come and worship the Lord with us because uh, we just have a good time in His presence. Uh, so don't forget that is Sunday morning at 9.30 in the morning. Um, service does start, but we do um, open up at 9 for prayer. Also, don't forget our midweek services on Wednesday. Um, they do start at 7 o'clock. Um, and uh, we do meet at 6.30 for prayer as well. Um, that's about it for the announcements um, tonight. And so I um, want to remind you as well to continue to uh, give to the Lord in your local church, wherever that is, wherever you attend. Uh, just continue and remain faithful um, just because of this, uh, this pandemic, this virus that is here. Um, it does not stop or slow. Um, what the Lord is doing. And so um, just continue to remain faithful that the doors of your church can still uh, remain open. And, um, you know, everything that still takes place, you know, some of you that go to bigger churches, their staff, staff is still operating, staff is still moving. Uh, they're still doing everything that they need to do. And so uh, just remember to stay faithful on um, your tithes and your offerings. Don't forget missionaries. Um, if, uh, you know, our church does give to the missions. And so continue to remain faithful because I'll tell you, if there's a lot of people suffering here in the United States, um, I can only imagine um, those missionaries that we have in third world countries, and uh, they really rely on the support of, of, um, of those of us back here in the States. And so <clears throat> remember to stay faithful to that. Um, that's about it for, um, for the announcements and for offering tonight. And so we are going, oh, actually, uh, I wanted to give a, a shout out to Donald and Janae. Shout out to Donald and Janae, man. Celebrated their four-year anniversary yesterday. And so, uh, yeah. Uh, thank you, Jesus. So I, I told Donald, man, I'm going to give you a shout out, brother. And uh, I didn't want Janae to feel left out, so uh, i got to shout them both out. Amen. We're, we're blessed to have you guys excited um, for, for the four years and just uh, seeing what God is doing. Um, he's brought you guys a long way. Uh, but there's still plenty of places to go with him. Amen. <laughs> and so um, tonight we are going to go before the Lord. And um, um, we're going to go before the Lord in prayer tonight. And so whatever your request uh, may have been, uh, we want to continue and pray um, for um, our country. Uh, we want to pray. Um, just, just a lot of things going on um, politically right now in our country. A lot of things um, that would swing in favor of uh, what we stand for as men and women of God. And so we just need to pray. Uh, we need to pray that the hand of the Lord would move and would just show favor um, upon things um, that are favorable for us. And, uh, and if not, um, may the Lord's will be done. Um, no matter which direction things go, um, how many of you know that we still remain faithful and committed to the Lord uh, because our eyes are not on our government, but our eyes are upon the Lord. Um, but we, we, we will stand, we will pray, and we will be in agreement that God's hand um, is going to favor um, for the things that his word stands on. Because we want our country to be a blessed country. And by that I just mean, uh, you know, talking about our next um, nominee to the Supreme Court. Um, we really uh, hoping that that will go through as, um, as no doubt it would benefit um, what we stand for and our values and our morals based on the word of God. And so we're going to go before the Lord tonight. We want to pray for tonight's message um, that God would uh, just really minister to our hearts. Um, I just, I know, I believe um, that the Lord, Holy Spirit, that He's going to move tonight. He's going to challenge. Um, he's going to, He's going to meet you right where you're at in your living room, and and, <laughs> and He's going to call you on some things. Amen. Uh, me too. You know, all of us. I'm, I'm not here to preach at you. Um, but that the word of the Lord preaches to us as a whole. And so let's go before the Lord tonight, and then afterwards just thank Him um, for His goodness, His mercy, and His grace. Father, we come before Your presence tonight, Lord. We thank You, and we honor You, and we praise You. And Father, we bless Your mighty name tonight. We ask that, Lord God, that, Father, You would pour out Your Spirit, God, uh, upon our nation, and upon our country, God. We want to lift up our elected officials, Lord. We want to pray that God, as 
this new nomination, Lord God, for the Supreme Court, Lord. We pray for your your favor, Father, that it would that it would go through, Lord, because we know and we understand that, Lord, that it will benefit um, what we stand for and believe in as men and women in the kingdom of God. But nonetheless, Lord God, we, we stand in agreement that it's going to be your will that's going to be done because, Lord, we know that you are the one that rises up and you are the one that brings down. And so, Father, tonight, Lord, we trust you uh, for whatever the outcome may be in many different situations, Lord God. We trust you. And we just accept your will, Father, whatever that is. But we nonetheless stand in the gap and we pray and we believe and we ask for your mighty hand of favor. Lord, we pray tonight. Um, for those that are listening, those that are live streaming tonight, Lord God, we pray that your word would come forth and that it would speak with power. Your word would speak with power. And that the authority of your word would, would, would dominate, Lord God, your fear. That the authority of your word would dominate over the lies of the enemy, Lord God. That the authority of your word tonight, Father, would put everything subject onto it tonight. And so, Holy Spirit, uh, we ask you tonight uh, that you would have your way, that you would speak tonight, Lord, uh, that you would move uh, by the power of your Spirit, uh, that you would ignite uh, a flesh, a fresh flame of fire upon our hearts, Lord. As we honor you, we bless you, we thank you tonight. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. amen. Come on, give the Lord praise. Jesus. Amen. Well, tonight, if you have your Bibles, I want you to turn with me to the book of John, chapter number 6, verse number 53. Hold your spot there, John, chapter 6, verse number 53. And so... Tonight, um, I've entitled this message tonight, Fight or Flight. Fight or Flight. Now, for those of you that may not be familiar with that term, that term simply means the behavior of a person when pressed into a corner or when faced with difficulties, or when attacked, or when, when, when placed in a position of needing to bring forth defense. And so tonight I want to look at the Word of God, and I want to take us through this story here tonight, and I want to speak to you tonight as men and women of God, and I want you to know that tonight, that in the kingdom of God, that I hope that you are not looking, that you have the option of flight. But I hope that you have the desire in your heart to rather want to stay and remain and fight when the enemy presses against your life. Or when the Lord allows you to go through a particular season in your life that may not always be easy to endure because we lose too many men and women back to the world or back to the things they came out of because as we go through the process of growing in Christ we come against many times things that become difficult in our walk and through these times of difficulties Many people, rather than stand and fight against the enemy, would rather take the easy road out and run or flight. And so tonight I'm here to encourage you as men and women of God to stand your ground and to fight against the enemy with the presence of God in you, with the Spirit of God leading you. And with the power of God before you, knowing that you can remain and you do have fight inside of you. John chapter 6. I'm going to read verses 53 through 
69. Then we're going to kind of establish a background for what's taking place here in the story and understand that there are many evangelistical tools that God will use to draw you into the kingdom. But the Lord never desires to keep you in the shallow end, just kind of scraping at the surface. But God wants to take you deeper. And sometimes the deeper He takes you, the harder it becomes. The more difficult it is to sometimes understand the things that are taking place around you and the struggles you may find yourself in. And rather than question God in these difficult places where you don't understand, where you could probably never understand, you've been called to not question the will of the Lord, but to rather be led by faith through the will of God. John chapter 6, verse number 53. Then Jesus said to them, Most assuredly I say to you, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink His blood, you have no life in you. Whosoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life, and I will raise him up at the last day. For my flesh is food indeed, and my blood is drink indeed. He who eats my flesh and drinks my blood abides in me, and I in him. As the living Father sent me, and I live because of the Father. So, so he who feeds on me will live because of me. This is the bread which came down from heaven. Not as your fathers ate the manna and are dead. He who eats this bread will live forever. These things he said in the synagogue as he taught in Capernaum. Verse number 60. Listen to the response. Therefore, many of his disciples, when they heard this, they said, This is a hard saying, and who can understand it? And when Jesus knew in himself that his disciples complained about this, he said to them, Does this offend you? What then, if you should see the Son of Man ascend where he was before? It is the Spirit who gives life. The flesh profits nothing. The words that I speak to you are Spirit, and they are life. But there are some of you who do not believe. For Jesus knew from the beginning who they were who did not believe and who would betray him. And he said, Therefore, I have said to you that no one can come to me unless it has been granted to him by my Father. Listen to this. Listen to verse number 66. Powerful. We understand they've been given a hard saying. It looks like it's difficult. And look at verse number 66 because this is what we find many times in the culture that we live in today. It says, From that time, Many of his disciples went back and walked with him no more. Then verse 67 says, Then Jesus said to the twelve, Do you also want to go away? But Simon Peter answered him, said, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. Also, we have come to believe and know that you are the Christ, the Son of the living God. Here in the book of John, as we just read, that Jesus is, 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 is talking to a multitude, to a group of people. And I want you to understand um, where this group came from, where, where this group started, and where they would end up, and how ultimately it would be too hard or too difficult of a saying what God was trying to minister to their lives. It was too spiritual and they were too carnal and they had no understanding 
And that is what we see many times today is we see people, they come into the house of God and, and, and they come to the kingdom of God and they commit their hearts to Jesus. And through the process of time, you would think that after years of being in church, after years of being ministered to, after years of being in church on a Sunday and on a Wednesday and on a Friday night and in prayer meetings and, and in just all the different things that take place, you would think that after some years have gone by that people would come to the place of understanding that they would no longer see the trials and the hardships and the things of life through the natural eye, but that they would begin to grow spiritually and begin to understand that they are involved and engaged in spiritual warfare. And so what John chapter 6 talks about in chapter 6 verse 11 before we get to the story that we're talking about is the multitude that Jesus is talking to, that the disciples that he had begin to, to, to minister to that had then begin to follow him. In John chapter 6, verse number 11, it's the story about the, the 5,000 men that are fed with the bread and the fish. And so what happens in John chapter 5 is, is there, there, there's a man who's there and, and, and he just wants to get touched by God. And the Lord heals him, a man who's sick, who's messed up for 38 years, and the Spirit of the Lord comes and touches his life. And so the miracles of Jesus have been spoken about amongst the country. And then immediately in John chapter 6, the Bible teaches us that a group of people began to follow Jesus because of the miracles he had performed and the people he had healed. And so it brings us to this place. And so the Bible says that Jesus is there and this multitude of 5,000 men the Bible talks about. They come to hear what the Lord has to say. And so as they're there, and the Bible says that evening comes, and it's about the time of the Passover, and that Jesus separates himself, and he goes into the mountains. And he begins to talk to his disciples, his twelve. And he begins to question and say, you know, what are we going to do about these people? They, they, no doubt they're probably hungry by now. And the disciples begin to speak amongst themselves and begin to talk to Jesus. And they come up with this understanding that there's a little boy that happens to be in the crowd. And he has some fish and some bread. And so the Lord says, you know what, sit everybody down amongst the grass here. And he begins to bless the food. And the Bible says that everybody had enough food. And that immediately after that they were able to take up basketfuls and save them for a later day. And so this is the beginning of when Christ, listen to what I'm saying, because I'm taking you somewhere here tonight. It's, it's important that you understand the foundation that's being laid. And, and so I'm not sure what method God used to draw you into his kingdom. I'm not sure, you know, what sort of, promises you heard or what sort of good things you saw or the miracles or thinking that you know you were just going to be a blessed person and seeing the blessings of God poured upon your life whatever God used to bring you into the kingdom will not sustain you through the hard times of life that's right you can't just hold on to the thing that got your attention in the beginning mm. but when God wants to take you deeper you better be prepared and understand that there has to be growth in your life. Because in the deep places where God desires to take you, sometimes those places become difficult. Sometimes the things that God will say to you are going to be difficult. And they are going to be a hard saying. And so these people... As you continue to read John chapter 6, the Bible says that after the people are fed, that the next day, or that day that the disciples get in a boat and they begin to go across the sea. They, go, they begin to go across to the other side to Capernaum. 
And the Bible says that in the middle of them rowing out a few miles out of the sea, that Jesus begins to walk on the water to them and freaks them out. And he gets into the boat with them and he travels across to the other side. So the next morning, those people that had followed Jesus for his miracles and that have now seen the provision of God, you have to understand that for these people at this time, to see a man come and begin to pour out provisions for them that would sustain their flesh was something completely out of the ordinary. It was something that got their attention. And so now, they are in pursuit of where Jesus is going. And so the Lord is trying to take them on a journey because He wants to take them deeper. And it's important that when the Lord desires to take you deeper, that you don't begin to question the will of God. That you don't begin to question the voice of God. But that when God allows you, when God allows something to happen in your life to bring you to that place of salvation and recognizing and realizing that who He is, He does it for a purpose. So when He asks you to do the hard thing, or when the hard thing is spoken to you, that you will remain. And so what happens is these people get up in the morning and they're freaking out because where is Jesus? And so the Bible says that some boats begin to come to their side and they jump in these boats and they travel to the other side and they get to the other side and they say, Jesus, where were you? Where did you go? They begin to want to talk and have a conversation with him. And that's what leads us to what I want to talk to you about here tonight. Verse number 53. He gets their attention. He's ministering. He's moving. He blesses them. He gets them to the point to where they're willing to travel and be in pursuit of him. And then listen to what he says to them in verse number 53. Then Jesus said to them, Most assuredly, I say to you, Unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink His blood, you have no life in you. Whosoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life, and I will raise him up at the last day. For my flesh is food indeed, and my blood is drink indeed. And he who eats my flesh and drinks my blood abides in me, and I in him. As the living Father sent me, and I live because of the Father. So he who feeds on me will live because of me. This is the bread which came down from heaven. Not as your fathers ate the manna and are dead. He who eats this bread will live forever. And so the Lord takes it from a place of just simply understanding things in the carnal sense. And he takes him to a place that is spiritual now. And he's trying to bring to them the revelation of who he is. And rather than these people understanding and seeing that He is the Son of God, they begin to question within their hearts, is this not Jesus, the son of Mary and Joseph? And they begin to reason in their own minds. And rather than understand uh, that what He is telling them uh, is that He is speaking about what would happen to Him in the future. He is speaking that His blood is going to be poured out and His flesh is going to be ripped. And unless you partake of that, unless you understand what that is, that what Jesus was talking about is He wasn't talking about them physically eating His flesh and physically drinking His blood. But they were missing it. And it became such a hard saying. Look at, in verse 60, what it says. Therefore, many of his disciples, when they heard this, they said, This is a hard saying. Who can understand it? I want you to understand tonight 
that there are going to be difficult roads in your life. And as I look to the times that we are in today, we don't fully understand why what has happened has happened. We don't understand it. And it's hard to, to accept. It's hard to take. But nonetheless, we have to be people that do not question what God allows and what God removes. We have to be a people that are kingdom-minded and understand that we cannot constantly get ourselves preoccupied with this world that we are living in now, but that we are of another world. We are of another kingdom, which is the kingdom of God. Just because you don't understand something doesn't mean you should run from it. Remember tonight, the title of this sermon, Fight or Flight. Verse number 66. From that time, many of his disciples went back and walked with him. No more. I want to I want to speak with you tonight on what sort of things, what sort of hard circumstances, what sort of hard words, hard journeys has God spoken to your life that have almost put you to a place of what these other disciples did. See, verse 66, it's not talking about just the multitude. It's not talking about the looky-loos or the people that were curious as to what Jesus was talking about. There are no mistakes in the Word of God. And the word that is clearly used is from that time Many of his disciples, many of his followers, many of his students, they went back to where they came from. They went back to their old life and they followed Jesus no more. And so you may say, I'm good right now. Things are fine. Here is the scary thing. Is that what trial, what temptation, what tribulation, what hardship in life has the power for you as a disciple of Jesus Christ today, walking with God, lifting up your hands and praising God. But when that hard thing comes across, your life, do you come to this place, to this statement where you walk back to where you came from and serve the Lord no more? Hmm. Think about this story. Do you understand now why I said fight or flight? Flight should not be an option in your vocabulary anymore when you have committed yourself to the kingdom of God and have made a decision that I am going to serve Jesus no matter what. We see it all the time. People disappearing. Just like in this story, 
doing so good for a moment. See, when Jesus was blessing, when Jesus was feeding, when Jesus was providing, when Jesus was doing the miracles, everything is fine and dandy. You're lifting your hands. You're raising your voice. You're smiling. You're talking about how good God is. Oh, but just let the Lord ask you to do something that's a little bit hard. Let Him ask you to go through a trial or a journey that may be a struggle in your life. And I wonder if you're still going to lift your hands to heaven and proclaim him as the king of glory and lift up the name of Jesus or if you're going to be just like these disciples in verse number 66 and go back to where you came from and follow Jesus no more until he gets your attention again until you need something again until God can give you a provision again and that is the problem with American Christianity and the culture that we live in is that people do not understand what the word commitment means. When you have committed yourself to the kingdom of God, that means come hell or high water, I am going to remain in the kingdom and nothing by any means shall move me. So I ask you today, are you ready to fight? Are you ready to stand your ground and to say, no, no, devil, not anymore. I will remain. Interesting. Look at that, verse 66. Let that, let that burn in your mind. That is a powerful, powerful scripture. From that time, many of his disciples, these are people that he had discipled. He, had, he was pouring himself into. He was their teacher. He was their rabbi. They were his disciples. But from that time, many of his disciples they went back. Backslide. Back to the world. Back to what they were doing before. They had an encounter with God. I wonder who these disciples were. I, I wonder where they came from. I wonder what their lives were before Jesus came and encountered them and began to bless them and they began to see the enrichment of their life. And then all of a sudden... The hard saying comes across. And listen. Listen as, 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 as we move forward with this. Listen to how powerful the story is. It all has to do with the revelation that you have been given as to who Christ is. There are some of you disciples and you still have no idea you, you, you're coming to church, but, but you, you've never experienced the true revelation of who Christ is. Because when you experience that revelation, like I'm going to show you in the Word tonight, I will always show you in the Word of God, just like I'm going to show you tonight, that when you've experienced that revelation of who Christ is, it does not matter how hard it gets. It does not matter how difficult the task the Lord speaks to you about. You will always come back and stand at that place and say, where else can we go? There, there, there's no fight. There's no question. You, 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 you've come to that knowledge and that understanding because the only way the only way that his 12 disciples were able to remain and not be part of those that went back when they were given the same hard saying listen to what I'm telling you tonight they were as a, as a group they were given the same hard saying so what separates these 12 from remaining and saying we will we will take what you've said 
as difficult as it is, we will take what you said and we will stand our ground versus those who just simply walked away and say, we can't do this anymore. You need to take those words out of your mouth. I can't do this anymore. Yes, you can. And you will. And you need to. Because you are a child of the King. Listen. <clears throat> to verse number 67 immediately after. <laughs> Listen to how amazing this is. Man, God's word is it's, it's, it's so beautiful, man. It's so amazing. Then Jesus said to the twelve, Listen to what he tells them. After those other disciples left and abandoned and, 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 and left, he said, we can't do this. It's too hard. Then Jesus looks at his 12, and he says this. Do you also want to go away? Mm. In other words, you heard it too. Mm. You heard what I had to say. Is it too difficult for you to understand as well? And listen to the response of Peter. Because when, when, when you have this understanding of Peter's response, then you will never take flight. You will always stay and fight. Listen to this. But Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. Also, listen, we have come to believe and know that you are the Christ, the Son of the living God. Did you catch that? Also, we have come to believe but not only to just believe, but to know that you are the Christ, the Son of the living God. And so what it comes down to is that, do you really know that Christ is the Son of the living God? Have you truly experienced that revelation? Or is God just religion to you? See, when you begin to build that relationship, when you know who He is, when you spend time in His presence every single morning because you know that you cannot go throughout this day without the presence of God, without the Spirit of the Lord, without God leading you and guiding you, you come to that place where you know and you understand and you believe and you are locked in to who God is. When it becomes something so real and so tangible in your life, then when the hard things come or when God asks you to go through the hardship or when something happens around your life and you don't understand it, just like the 12 disciples, although the same word was spoken, they were probably just as puzzled because they did not know yet that Christ would be crucified. But one thing they understood is we are not going to question you because we know and we believe that you truly are the Son of God. Amen. And with that, with that, comes the ability to stand and to fight another day. Amen. And friends, I want you to know that we have not seen nothing yet. I will speak it again, and I will continue to speak it to prepare you. That there will be opposition in our country for what we stand in and what we believe in like we have never seen before. And things will get hard. 
There are going to be things that are going to happen around us. And we are not going to understand. But if you have come to the knowledge and to the understanding and to the revelation of who Christ is, then when all of this chaos and all of these things around you begin to not make sense, you will come to the place of understanding that it is the will of God that is being done and that it is our responsibility to pray, to stand in the gap, and to continue to believe. And I ask you, how many of you will be in the kingdom at this time next year? Donald was going through some pictures and he was telling me that as he was looking through them, he couldn't believe how many people were gone. Now, there's three different ways that people have gone. Some have died, some have left to another church, and some have just completely walked away from God altogether. Three different ways. And so, there are just so many Christian casualties. The ones that left to another church, I pray that they're in the will of God and that they're, they're doing the kingdom, whatever the kingdom has called them to do. Those that have passed away, pray that their hearts were right and they are now in the presence of the Lord. But it's that third category that I'm concerned with. It's those ones that have walked away because things got too hard. Things got too hard. Do you know that's why people leave the kingdom of God? Because things got too hard. Either it got too hard to continue to fight off the temptation and they couldn't deal it with no more. It's just too hard. It's just too hard. It's just too hard. I just can't take it. Or the trial around them was too hard and so they ran back to the world. They ran back to their own life. They just ran and hid. You are completely doing what the Word of God teaches us not to do when you do those things. As difficult as it may be, we have to be willing to stand in the words of Peter where he says, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. Also, we have come to believe and know that you are the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus answered them, Did I not choose you, the twelve? And one of you is a devil. He spoke of Judas Iscariot, the son of Simon, for it was he who would betray him, being of the twelve. What's the thing that is hard before you. That you may be having a hard time with. Remember, as I close with this study tonight, the group of people that Christ would draw in started from them seeing the miracles. Then from there, the feeding of the 5,000. Then from there, he begins to speak something that was a hard saying. And as a result, many weren't willing or capable of understanding it. And so they walked away and never came back. And I want you to know that God wants to take you deeper. He wants to take you deeper. And the deeper you go, the harder it gets. But the deeper you go, the greater the reward. There is no greater joy and there is no greater pleasure in this world than being used by the Spirit of God. There is no greater calling than to be called by God, used by God, when God moves through you. But I ask you, 
are you willing to go deeper? And if you are, it will get harder. And my prayer is that when it does get harder, that you won't run, that you won't hide, that you won't take flight, but that you will stand in the words of Peter. Where am I going to go? As hard as this trial is, as difficult as, as what I have to deal with, as, as difficult as this situation before me is, God, I, I have nowhere else to go. Because I've had the revelation. I know who you are. The day that I got saved, it was a true conversion where you know the Spirit of God came and He dwelt inside you. And He lives inside you. And He delivered you. And He set you free. And He placed His Spirit in you. And when you walk with that revelation, when hard times come, you will remain standing. Amen. Let's bow our heads tonight in reverence to the Lord. Tonight, as always, I'm going to give an opportunity. Maybe you're watching, live streaming, and Jesus Christ isn't Lord of your life. I want to give you that, that chance tonight, that opportunity tonight. Um, to accept him into your heart. And uh, very simple. It's just simply believing in your heart and confessing with your mouth that Jesus is Lord. And so tonight I'm going to lead you in a prayer. <clears throat> if that's you, if that's a decision um, that you want to make tonight, um, just simply repeat this prayer. Say, Heavenly Father, I, uh, I come before you tonight and I recognize that I am I'm a sinner, God. And I am in need of a Savior. And I believe tonight um, that Jesus, that you were sent, the Son of God, you were sent to this earth, and that you were crucified, you were buried in the tomb, and you were raised up on the third day. And you did that to take on the weight of sin, to carry the penalty of sin. And so tonight I recognize myself as a sinner. And Father, I accept you as Lord. And Savior of my life. And so I ask you tonight to fill me with your Spirit, lead me by your Spirit, empower me by your Spirit. Father, as I commit my heart and my life to you, I ask this in Jesus' name. You know, tonight we're going to close tonight in a word of prayer and um, simply entitled Fight or Flight. And I'm hoping that tonight that, that, that you'll, you'll prepare your heart that when hardship comes that you won't run that you won't hide um, that you won't go back because things got too difficult but that you will have the understanding of that revelation that Peter spoke of through the word tonight that to whom else shall we go for you alone have the words of eternal life and we know and we believe that you are the Son of God, the Christ, with that understanding. Father, tonight we thank you uh, for the power of your word, and we ask you, Lord, um, that you would prepare our hearts as your, your people, as your children, as men and women in the kingdom, Lord. We want to be prepared um, for just the days to come. We want to be prepared um, for the hardships, Lord, um, that we know are going to be uh, coming through our, our nation, through our culture, God. And that, Father, that we would remain faithful, that we would stick um, to the understanding that Jesus Christ is Lord, um, that we've had that revelation, um, that we've experienced, uh, we've experienced um, just your touch upon our life and upon our hearts. And that with that, Lord, um, that we will stay and we will remain faithful and we will not be ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. We will not be ashamed of your word. We will not be ashamed of what your word teaches. But we will stand 
on the corners. We will stand on any platform that we are given, God, and we will proclaim it as the word of the Lord. And so, Father, we bless you tonight. We honor you tonight. And we give you all the praise and glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, God bless you tonight. Amen. Um, if you're uh, able to, hope to see you at prayer meeting tomorrow. If not, um, see you Sunday morning at church at 9.30. God bless.